Coming up, girl power. We're marking International Women's Day history and all. Then, around the globe, we're heading to Africa for a look at a country rich in kings, pyramids, and one of the longest rivers on Earth. Also, baby boom. We're in Nebraska with the details. Plus, she's the 2023 Girl of the Year and the first doll to represent her culture. We had not done a doll of Indian culture and thought that it would be an interesting story to tell for more girls to learn. Our Kids Edition correspondent takes us behind the scenes at this popular toy company. And Believe in Books. This teen from Florida is getting books in the hands of some kids in need. I saw that there was a reading gap and wanted to help lessen this. Her inspiring story just ahead. This is NBC Nightly News Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. It's always great to be with you guys. We have a super lineup this week, including a look at daylight saving time, plus an all-girl Boy Scout troop. We can't wait to bring you that story. And a little later on, secrets of the Oscars. If you love movies or dream of being an actor, this segment is for you. We have the inside scoop on the Academy Awards, including some fun facts that might surprise you. But first, we want to begin this week with International Women's Day. Our good friend Rahima Ellis takes a look at the history behind this day. Every year, women around the world celebrate International Women's Day on March 8th. But what's the history of this date? Well, it dates back to the early 1900s, when women here in America were still fighting for things like the right to vote. Soon, women in other countries began celebrating the day. And then in 1987, the first proclamation of Women's History Month was signed by President Ronald Reagan. A way to celebrate is to learn about a new woman or two new women who've had an impact on American history or on world history. Abigail Adams, Harriet Tubman, Maya Angelou, and Sandra Day O'Connor led the way for women. They set an example for women and they are an inspiration to us. It's thinking about how important the women in your life really are to you. You can start by talking about your day-to-day -day experience. Is your teacher a woman? And do you have a mom at home or a grandma? And then you could talk about their experience. March 8th, a day to remember female achievements and promote women's rights and honor girl power. All right, Rahima, thanks so much. Well, speaking of girl power, a group of young girls in West Haven, Connecticut, are blazing a new trail. They are now the first Boy Scout troop for girls in the city. Kyle Jones with our NBC station WVIT has the details. These three girls say they are through with stereotypes that girls can't do the same thing as boys. I've heard that at school from a lot of kids. I've heard it in like stores. They're half of the six girls in West Haven who will have their first Boy Scout meeting on Tuesday. It's actually really super exciting. Um, these girls have been with me for over four years. I've watched them grow. They've grown up together in Girl Scouts, taking road trips to Washington, D.C. and Savannah, Georgia. They've had fun, but they felt that they wanted to do more. Boy Scout troops made up of girls are growing, and their parents say that it's helping them become strong women. I think it will give her opportunities that perhaps she wouldn't have otherwise gotten. The girls tell us that their friends are happy that they're starting the group, and those that don't like it don't have to do it. I think it sends to a lot of girls, too, that you can be anything you want to be and just go for it. All right, Kyle, thanks so much. Now to our Around the Globe series. This week, we're heading to the African continent, where a hidden corridor was just discovered in Egypt inside the Great Pyramid of Giza. For more on the pyramids and Egypt, we turn to our friend Raf Sanchez. Welcome to Egypt. Home to some of the most exciting mysteries from our past and some of the most important questions about our future. It's a place rich with history, beautiful landscapes, and great food. Let's get started. Humans have been living in Egypt for tens of thousands of years, longer than almost anywhere else on Earth. And around 5,000 years ago, they built these, the mighty Pyramids of Giza. 
How did the ancient Egyptians build their pyramids? We still don't really know how they made such huge structures without modern equipment. But for much of human history, these were the tallest buildings on Earth. And we do know the pyramids were giant tombs with hidden chambers inside to bury ancient kings and queens. Before burial, the royal bodies were wrapped carefully in cloth. We call those wrapped bodies mummies. Why did the ancient Egyptians create mummies? They believed in keeping the body safe so the soul could live on in the afterlife, a new life after a person dies. This was once the site of an ancient temple. Mummies were brought here for blessing before they were buried, the last stop on their journey to the afterlife. They stored the mummies in beautiful coffins like this one. And instead of using letters, ancient Egyptians wrote with pictures called hieroglyphics. Each letter in hieroglyphics has a symbol. We use letters and they use pictures. Exactly. We use, they used pictures. And this is why the hieroglyphic in a tomb is beautiful. It's like a, a scene because of the way of how the artist can draw the pictures in a beautiful way. One of the most famous mummies, King Tut or Tutankhamun. Is it true that King Tut was the youngest pharaoh? Yes, it's true. King Tut was just eight years old when he became a pharaoh or ruler, one of the youngest ever in Egypt. How many people are in Egypt? Today, Egypt is home to 100 million people. But because most of the country is desert, almost all Egyptians live along the banks of the River Nile. The Nile is the lifeblood of Egypt, always has been. More than 4,000 miles long, the Nile is one of the longest rivers in the world and is used for trade, transport, and of course, water. But with climate change, it's important to use the Nile's water carefully and make sure there's enough for future generations to grow food. Speaking of food, it's a big deal in Egypt and you had a lot of questions about it. What foods do people in Egypt eat on special occasions? We went to the Zuba restaurant in Cairo to find out. Kushari is one of our favorite. It's our national dish. It uh, contains rice, lentils, chickpeas, pasta, uh, noodles, and there is tomato sauce, Tabdo's fried onion. So it's perfect for, for every age. Like adults love it, kids love it. So it's really good. Another favorite among kids? It's shawarma. Shawarma is a kind of meat sandwich. It comes in pita bread with hummus and vegetables inside. I think most of the time it's made like fresh chicken. It's cut perfectly. It has a lot of good sauces. I like the way it's made. They say that if you drink from the water of the Nile, you'll always come back to Egypt. And with so many ancient secrets still to learn, there's a whole lot of exploring left to do. Raf, thanks so much. Well, guess what time it is. This weekend, it will be time to spring forward. Daylight saving time. That's when we move the clocks forward one hour and lose an hour of sleep. will take place on Sunday, March 12th at 2 a.m. But good news, we gain an hour of daylight. Did you know that two states do not observe daylight saving time? Hawaii and Arizona. Well, now for our picture of the week, the Henry Dorley Zoo and Aquarium in Nebraska just welcomed this baby elephant calf. The little guy does not have a name yet, but we're told he's doing well. It's the third African elephant calf born at the zoo in the last 14 months. Experts say a male calf can weigh over 200 to 300 pounds at birth and are able to stand just minutes after being born. Did you know African elephants are the largest land animal in the world? Meantime, she's the 2023 Girl of the Year, American girl that is, and the first doll to represent her culture. Our Kids Edition correspondent Lucy takes a look at how this new American Girl doll is teaching kids about culture and a whole lot more. These dolls tell the story of America from the past to the present. American Girl is a company that makes all sorts of dolls, and lots of kids, including myself, love to collect them. Every year, they release a brand new Girl of the Year doll to show what it's like to be an American Girl today. I'm here at the American Girl place in New York City to check out their new 2023 Doll of the Year, Cubby Sharma. Cubby Sharma is the American Girl's 2023 Girl of the Year. She's the first girl of the year whose family is from India. 
North India, to be more exact. Covey lives with her mom, dad, and little brother in Metuchen, New Jersey. She loves Broadway musicals and creating her own music. She's very close with her grandma who actually brings her to the city to see a show, a Broadway show, Wicked, and that gets her really excited about Broadway and performance. Why did you choose a girl of Indian heritage for this year? American Girl was built on a foundation of diverse and inclusive storytelling. We had not done a doll of Indian culture and uh, thought that it would be an interesting story to tell for more girls to learn. In order to tell each doll's story, American Girl gets input from lots of advisors throughout the design process. I got to hang out with Arusha, who served as the student advisor for Cuffy. What does it mean to be a student advisor for American Girl? I helped try to make Gavi like as authentic as a 12-year-old possible. My help suggests that she should call her grandmother Dadima. We both live in New Jersey. We enjoy Broadway. We like to dance. We also do Bollywood dancing, which is like a really big part of both of our lives. What is Bollywood? Bollywood dancing is like Indian fusion dance. It blends traditional um, dancing with more of a modern to make a sort of dance style that everyone can enjoy. I've been doing Bollywood dance since I was four years old under um, Rina Shah. How will this doll help kids learn about your culture? We're similar in so many different ways and she's kind of like a mirror for me. So I think that if she can be like a mirror for me, she can be a window for like everyone else who's never experienced Indian culture before. Covey is the 21st Girl of the Year, and every Girl of the Year gets her own display at the American Girl Store here in New York. After the interview, Arusha and I took a tour of the American Girl Store, and we even got our dolls hairstyled by the professionals. It's beautiful. Yeah, it looks so long. good. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, well it was so cool to meet Arusha and learn how she helped create an American Girl doll that's based on her culture. For Nightly News Kids Edition, I'm Lucy. Back to you, Lester. Lucy, that was great. Thanks so much. Well, let's switch gears and head to Los Angeles, where the Academy Awards will be presented on Sunday to stars of the big screen and a lot of other people who make movies, including some of those animated films I know you guys love. It's a pretty big honor, and get this, even some kids your age have won an Oscar. Our friend Dylan Dreyer has more on the secrets of the Oscars. The 95th Academy Awards will take place at the Dolby Theater in Los Angeles on Sunday. And if you ever dreamed of becoming an actor or making movies, this ceremony is not to be missed. There's something about the Oscars that's bigger than every other award show. The thing that's special about the Academy Awards is that unlike a lot of other big awards like the Golden Globes, the Academy Awards are voted on by people who actually work in the movie industry. Categories include everything from best actress and actor to costume design, writing, makeup, best director, best movie, and of course something kids love, best animated feature. Well, I don't know, I just get pumped up and uh, kind of wing it. This year movies like I know I can never defeat you, Lobo. Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. No, we can't win it without me. Turning Red. I don't understand. And Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio are all nominated for the animated Oscar. So I think that's one category that particularly a lot of younger movie fans are going to be really interested in. Something else fans are usually interested in? Seeing the stars walk the red carpet. But this year, organizers have rolled out something new. Hi kids, I'm Sarah Freeman. I'm an NBC News producer and I'm here along the world famous Hollywood Boulevard where the Academy has put up this giant tent for when the celebrities arrive on Oscar Sunday. And it's a new look this year. Usually the carpet's red, but this year it's a champagne color. Over there along the risers are where hundreds of media from all over the world will stand and interview the actors, directors, and all the other nominees as they make their way into the Dolby Theater. Once the nominees and guests arrive, the Academy Awards are presented. Until the envelope is opened, only a couple people know who the Oscar will go to. Basically, no one knows who the Oscar winners are, except for just a couple of people 
who work for the accounting firm that actually tabulates the winners. So it's just about two or so people that know the winners and they are there at the Oscars just to make sure that the correct envelopes are given out and the correct winners are announced. And speaking of the Oscars and those golden statuettes. The Oscar statue is a beautiful golden man. He's called Oscar because apparently someone who worked at the Academy many, many years ago looked at the statue and thought that it looked like her uncle Oscar. So the nickname stuck. And what's interesting, what you hear from a lot of people who win Oscars, when they actually get to pick it up and hold it for the first time, they're very surprised at how heavy it is. An Oscar statue weighs eight and a half pounds. If you want to get an idea of how much that weighs, go to your refrigerator and pick up a gallon of milk. That's basically what it feels like as far as the weight to hold an Oscar. Did you know Walt Disney holds the record for the most Oscars ever won? He received 26 Academy Awards during his life. And the oldest person ever to be nominated is legendary composer John Williams. He received his 53rd Oscar nomination this year, right before he turned 91 for scoring The Fablemans. Is it still a thrill to hear your name? Absolutely. I guess I, well, it's now 53 Oscar nominations, which seems unreal that anybody could be that old and working that long. But I think, I think it's like baseball. Every time you get in the game, you want to win the game. So if you're nominated, I, it's very exciting. Even after 53 years, I'm very pleased. Win or lose, the Academy Awards is not just for grown-ups. Kids have been nominated and have won, too. When you think of Oscar winners, you think of people like Brad Pitt and Julia Roberts and Sandra Bullock, these actors and actresses who have had long careers. But in actuality, some very young people have been nominated for Oscars and have even won. Oscars before. Tatum O'Neill is the youngest person to ever win an Oscar. She won Best Supporting Actress in 1974 when she was just 10 years old. And no matter what your age, if you're a movie fan, the Academy Awards ceremony is always a hit. All right, Dylan, thanks. Finally, in our inspiring kids series, one high school sophomore used her own experience during the pandemic to expand her love of reading and share it with other kids. Let's get details now from our good friend, Kristen Dahlgren. Like some kids, 16-year-old Natasha Agarwal started reading a lot more during the pandemic. Because I couldn't see my friends or really leave my house during the pandemic, reading was a great outlet and source of entertainment for me since life was more slow paced and there was less to do. Reading was an escape for her, but Natasha began to realize that some other kids may not have the same access to books. I started thinking about how hard it must have been for someone who couldn't attend online school and didn't have this educational outlet of reading. And I wanted to make a change in my community. So she decided to do something. I saw a need for more reading materials directly in my community in Southwest Florida. And I saw that there was a reading gap and wanted to help lessen this. Natasha started Believe in Books, a nonprofit that distributes books to kids in need in her community. Believe in Books hosts book drives and collects new and gently used books, which are then collected, sorted, and packaged to be sent to children in need. Once we collect the books, we distribute them through our nonprofit partner organizations and we assess the needs that they have, age groups of books they need, and then we can send them accordingly. I have these for you guys. Natasha recently visited one community center that's been on the receiving end of the Believe in Book Drives. I have seen the reactions of preschool children at the Guadalupe Center, which is actually where I am today, in their Van Otterloo Library. They've been instrumental in helping us to grow as an organization. Families are grateful. It's hard to describe their reactions because there's just so much joy in them. Our families are living at the poverty level and they don't have access to books at their home. The fact that they're able to take these books home and create their own library and be able to enjoy reading is really a gift that Natasha is giving so many of our children in our community. And it's really special because they wouldn't have these books otherwise. With what she was able to do, we were able to really stock our library and make sure that not only do we have the books that we want, 
we have the books we need and we have extras to give out to the parents and the families. And reading at home is just such a critical need in the community. Um, and it makes a difference when children go off to school if they're prepared and know how to read. She really changes children's lives. Natasha says seeing the reaction on the kids' faces means the world to her. It means everything to me seeing the reactions, especially of little kids receiving the books since they wouldn't have them if the drive hadn't happened. And when I see the reactions, it reminds me of why I started the organization and why I should keep building on it. And she has no plans of stopping. I have a mission of distributing 100,000 books to kids in need by the time I graduate, which is in two years. I really would like to see people in different areas, different communities, post their own book drives and new chapters because I think that we could grow as an organization. The mission is quite simple, and it's easy to collect books no matter where you're located. All right, Kristen, thanks so much. Well, that is going to do it for us parents. Just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, email a video to us at nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com. We'll try to answer them in an upcoming episode. You can also follow us on Instagram at nightlykids. Thanks for watching, everyone. Remember to take care of yourself and each other. So long.